Hello everyone, Space Junk here, and today I've got a very interesting video for you guys. As the title read, and you know, as the intro read, today we're going to talk about the frameshift drive and about the history and the lore of the frameshift drive and does it work and what's the theory behind it and what is it to begin with and how does it even work and I've been doing some research and um, it turns out there's actually a legitimate yeah legitimate theory behind it and also uh, the lore is, uh, is pretty amazing it actually turns out that there was a frameshift drive before the one that they're using in Elite Dangerous that is was even better in terms of um, range and functionality but they didn't use it anymore they don't use it anymore for specific reasons and I'm going to explain that later on first I'm going to try to explain what frame what frameshift drive is so basically the frameshift drive is kind of the warp of Elite Dangerous yeah uh, you activate it and you fly from point A to point B this goes with extremely amounts of uh, speeds uh, obviously that is not possible in theory because uh, you can't go faster than speed of light but how they do this is they basically they are uh, rather than accelerating the ship through space so going really quick and quicker and quicker and quicker until you go faster than speed of light which is not possible they um, a frameship drive moves the space around the ship so it allows it to go extremely fast and that is without um, causing extreme amounts of energy or causing things like uh, th uh, time distortion you don't have that when you go into frameshift drive because you go into this different dimension where you basically uh, go where an extreme fast travel is possible uh, that's why it looks like you're going to this portal the moment you activate frameshift drive or into this warm I just said that you can't go faster in light and you can't in the real world however in Elite Dangerous this is done before because um, you've got the super crews obviously oh, which I'm in right now kinda and the moment you go um, faster than 1c I believe you go faster than speed of light so you go like uh, 20 times 100 times the speed of light sometimes and that is also not possible but then again um, I do understand that they don't want players to literally travel a hundred years to the next um, solar system so uh, yeah I, I totally understand but you know it, it kinda shows that Elite Danger is not completely realistic although within the um, in, within uh, its own respects and within the sa in the same universe it is extremely realistic for that so on what real life theory is the frameshift drive based on? It's based on the Alcubier drive. I'm hoping that I'm saying this correctly. Uh, it's basically a um, a speculative uh, idea that um, rather than exceeding the speed of light, what I just said, it traverses distances by contracting the space in front of the ship and expanding the ship uh, the space behind the ship. Um, resulting in an effective faster than light travel however I'm not really that um, efficient <laughs> on the uh, sciency part of the occupier drive however I do know that there is a lot of history behind the frameshift drive and previous frameshift drives because there have been uh, quite some uh, that actually so this it comes from uh, the sources of this is from Elite 2 Out of the Darkness which is uh, kind of a novel uh, found on the internets and um, the previous hyperdrive was in theory capable of bringing you to any point in the galaxy you liked as long as you had the fuel and the range it does require a lot of time uh, with that said it you probably would have been into your ship for a couple of months if you really want to go really 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 far the problem with this is that uh, bandits would take advantage of it and just scan the wake of let's say a cargo ship that would uh, travel for two weeks to a certain point in the galaxy very 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 far away 
the bandit chip would know the wake and then uh, make sure that he would um, pass him, go faster than the cargo ship, wait on the other side of the wake and then just blow him up. And that was the point that they thought that uh, this type of frameshift drive was really efficient, was really useful, but it didn't work because people, bandits, military forces took advantage of it. After that, they took the common frameshift drive that we all know and use. Because after a new development, um, a couple of years ago in the Elite Dangerous Galaxy, uh, the travel times were cut down significantly because of new uh, frameshift drives and the only drawback of that being that the arrival point must have been a star or uh, the center of a star gravity well. That's why when you go into frameshift drive you always end up at a star at the center of that uh, solar system. So this is where it gets very very interesting, at least I think so. The massive capital ships of the Federation and the Imperial Navy still use the old hyperdrives. So the downside of this is that it will take considerably larger amounts of time for them to arrive in their intended destination. And it also means that that is why the, the moment these spaceships come in, uh, they tear this hole right through, um, through space-time and you hear these massive roars and it's, it's just, it gets crazy because of um, the fact that these ships um, are so big that it also takes them very longer times to come out and decelerate from that other dimension. But wait, there's more. There's also something called Witch Base. Witch Base basically is this area uh, that people call the seventh dimension where uh, when they use the old FSD drives, they basically went through that dimension to travel because there they could travel really, really, really fast. Alcubierre drive, or Alcubierre drive, I don't know how you say it. However, um, that area is where presumably the Targoids lived, and Targoids is an alien race that, you know, they took out, um, they yanked you out of the the seventh dimension, the uh, witch space, and it's a very unknown area and apparently the Targoids live there. However, we don't know, because uh, we've not seen Targoids in Elite Dangerous and they are maybe there, they may be not. Um, however, we've seen a lot of hints of them maybe returning, so that might be possible. So yeah, but basically this is uh, all that I have for you guys today. I will be making more videos about this in the future, presumably, depends on uh, if you guys like this. Um, yeah, there's a lot to be told about the FSD, there's a lot to be told about the history of Elite Dangerous in general because everything goes into each other because one time I'm talking about FSD and then that has something to do with the Targoids and everything is linked together and it's an amazing story, it's an amazing lore, it's very, um, it's very rich and very well written and I think that that is what makes it so interesting but also the reason why people... Um, but the reason why it's hard to get this information or that a lot of people are maybe wrong about information maybe a lot of stuff in my video is also wrong is because the creators don't really explain it that well and that's what makes it interesting that's what makes it uh, mysterious and, and fun to to talk about and that's what makes Elite Dangerous a really 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 good game not only the gameplay but also the lore and everything that comes with it so yeah that was my video I hope you guys enjoyed I'll be making more videos in the future. I'm sorry I haven't been uploading a lot lately. Uh, I'll be very busy. Uh, however, I'll try to upload more. And I'll see you guys in the future. Cheers.